I'm really excited in my heart, stirred in my heart for what we're going to do tonight. We're going to pray tonight, actually. Um, got some direction today for what we're going to do. But hey, if it's your first time here, welcome uh, tonight, Wednesday night. Uh, Wednesday nights are a little different uh, each week. We have Small Group Wednesday, uh, which is uh, coming up next week, right? Is it next week already? This is the fourth Wednesday. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. So never mind. Man, the month has flown by. Anybody like, it's Christmas is like two months, right? It's coming again, <laughs> right? No, so it's just going, anyway, first two, month, first two uh, Wednesdays of the month we teach. Uh, just encourage the, with the word, and then we have small group Wednesday, then night of prayer. Uh, coming up in October on the fifth Wednesday, we have what we call encounter night, which is just a time of uh, prayer and presence with all, all age groups, um, I guess K through, uh, you know, older. <laughs> uh, so we're looking forward to that. So uh, just, I believe, a strategic, strategic way to do our midweek services. Um, tonight, though, as we welcome you, a couple announcements. Uh, we're going to receive our tithes and offerings at the end uh, of the service uh, tonight. I just sometimes think, um, well, I'm going to give you a scripture. The Bible talks about how uh, in, in Mark chapter 11, um, well, actually, not. this is a different passage. Talk, it, same passage about forgiveness. But there's a passage in, in Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, where if you have ought in your heart, right, or if you know, leave your gift at the altar, right, and he said, go to that person. So sometimes we give gifts or we bring our tithes and offerings, and there's things going on in our heart. Um, but really, those should be dealt with before we even give, according to the Scripture. And again, I don't have that scripture for you, but this, this is why we're receiving at the end, because what we're going to do tonight. Um, anyway, so there's that. I'm gonna pause. I just got to, I just, I, I've been going, all right? So, uh, so I just got to tap back into my, into my heart uh, and just quiet, quiet, my, quiet my mind for a moment. A couple announcements. Uh, we got moms on the porch, um, which is a youth fundraiser, or a kids fundraiser, rather. Great prices, actually, too. Uh, so you can decorate your house and send some kids to camp. Um, we have the uh, booth in the back, uh, which is just a, a voting booth, talking about you need to vote. I know it's so funny that Land, you know Landon talked about this on Sunday. I've shared this a few times. You know, by not voting, you play, you know, uh, on the same team as the one that is trying to destroy our nation, steal, kill, and destroy. It's been happening for plenty of years. I, I believe with all my heart. If uh, if the, those who call themselves Christians in our nation uh, got out and vote and did their duty, we wouldn't be where we are today. So uh, you're like, well, what's the point? None of it doesn't count. It doesn't matter anyway. Uh, I love this statement uh, that, it, you know, duty is man's. The results are the Lord. Yeah. Duty is man's. The results are the Lord. Uh, and so uh, pray about you know, who you're to vote for, look at their issues, all those kind of things, uh, and get with the Lord and, and, and do your duty, you know, and then trust the Lord. Can I tell you um, the coolest thing is, no matter who gets in office, my, the place that we trust doesn't change. It's not a man uh, that we put our trust and our faith in. It's not a person. It is the Lord. So um, that's what's so cool. God is on his throne. Uh, it's we don't pray to president whoever elect we pray to the Lord but we do pray um, we do pray for a righteous person to take office uh, and and I believe if the if the people of God will humble themselves and pray for the nation we will see the righteous take office one day maybe this year uh, again this is where you know I believe God, can, the, the heart of the king, like the Bible says, is in the hand of the Lord. You know, God's not limited by whoever's in the office. So, um, but anyway, praise the Lord. Now we'll get off that. Uh, politics, we're going to get into the word tonight, and then we're going to pray. I want to share something. What we're, what we're going to do tonight is we are going to pray uh, for our enemies. <laughs> Amen. You're all like, I don't got no enemies. All right. All right. <laughs> That's just because you haven't heard their name lately. That's just because you haven't seen them post on Facebook in the last week. Can I tell you that there's things going on in our hearts 
quite often, this is why the Lord's like, hey, if you got something going on in your heart before you give your gift, you need to take care of that. Go to that person. Um, but he also tells us that we're to be praying for our enemies. Um, I, I'm even just pulling up my notes here. Uh, I'm a little behind on getting ready. <clears throat> but here it is. And so the title of this uh, tonight, what we're going to talk about, is the blood washing. The blood washing and talking about praying for our enemies. So a couple scriptures that say this. We, we've heard this, you know, pray for your enemies. But let's look at the word tonight because faith comes when we read the word. Uh, and faith uh, is how we're to walk or make our way. So sometimes with our enemies, we haven't made progress because we're not making it the way that we're supposed to, as a righteous person, the way we're supposed to make our way is by faith. The Bible says that the righteous are to live, the righteous are to walk by faith. So sometimes we've been stopped concerning relationships because we've been we've made no progress uh, concerning our enemies or concerning that relationship that was smashed, you know, strife, uh, opposition, hurt. We've made no progress. We're still, that relationship still is a dumpster fire. That relationship still is a hurt. That relationship still is enemy X. That relationship, I was going to show this portion of Billy Madison. I, I watched this back when I was in like fourth grade at a friend's house. Uh, Billy Madison's a movie. I would not recommend watching it. Um, I, don't, I haven't seen it in years, but I do remember this one part where Billy Madison, he apologizes to this guy. Uh, at the end of the movie, and he said, hey, is this the guy that went to this high school? I actually watched it today, this three-minute clip. And he goes, yeah. He goes, hi, you probably don't remember me, but this is Billy Madison, and I just wanted to, uh, uh, to, uh, to apologize. I, I did some things in high school to you that at the time I thought were funny, but now I, I just realized they were really mean, and um, I just was hoping you could find it in your heart to forgive me. Um, and he said, yeah, no problem. He's like, yeah, no, no problem. Didn't even know about it, you know? And just, he hangs up the phone and he's like, okay, well, Billy's like, okay, well, maybe we can do coffee sometime. Like, it's just hilarious, right? Like, he's, he's like, yeah, that, I'd like that. And so uh, he hangs up the phone and the guy goes over to the wall and on the wall is a list of names uh, of people to kill. And he crosses Billy Madison's name off that list. Like, I don't have to kill him anymore. And then it, it's, kind of, it's a comedy movie, right? But can I tell you, when you have enemies, it's not funny. And it's not comedy. It's not. And later, just in that same clip, just shortly, here is this, this moment where uh, Billy Madison's on the stage and his life is in jeopardy. And this guy pops up from the back balcony and saves his life because he had got things right with somebody. It was a comedy, so I didn't want to show it, but the reality is sometimes our lives, because we would get something right with somebody, could, could be and would be saved. Uh, there are people that God brings into our lives um, that we're supposed to be in connection with. There are also people that, uh, that the enemy would love to just cause it to be a stumbling block. Uh, to keep you and I from running well. So again, we're just talking about uh, loving our enemies. We're talking about uh, praying for our enemies. We're talking about rest restoration. And to do that, we're going to have to do it by faith. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm making this statement, and then we're going to look at how to do it. And then we're going to do it. And I just believe uh, there's going to be just, just awesome tonight. Just thinking awesome. All right? So... Matthew 5, 44, so let's just look at these scriptures. It says, pray for those who persecute you. Pray for those who persecute you. Despitefully use you. And desire, uh, I, I love this, or desire to stand over you. Look at, what I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Ever, here's the thing about enemy so many times, it's like what they did was spiteful. They did it on purpose. Anybody ever felt like they did it on purpose? Anybody ever felt like they did it to hurt me? 
They're doing that. And, and you know what? That's just wrong. They're being, and I've been good to them. And I've given to them. And I've given to them. And I've given to them. And that's how they're going to treat me? This, this spiteful? Despite all of, that I've done for them? Despite they're going to be, right? So you get resentful. You get frustrated. You get angry. You get bitter. Root of bitterness springs up. And it takes a hold deep in your heart. And it does, that's not that easy to deal with. You ever try to weed Bermuda grass out of a garden? You can pull those green tops, but those roots, they keep coming back. So here's this, pa- this passage. Well, here we have another passage just in another gospel account in Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, we're going to start in verse 27. Um, but I say to you who hear, so how many hear? Not just how many are here, how many have ears to hear? Okay. <laughs> So that's what we're going to have ears to hear instead of, sometimes when we hear things that we don't want to talk about, right? La, 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 la. Anybody ever done that in church, kind of, so to speak? Pastor's talking, Holy Ghost is talking, and we start going, ha, la, 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 you know, or like, ha, na, 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 or let's see, oh, let's check my uh, Facebook, or let's check my text messages, or let's think about dinner, because we're not talking about that. But I say to you who hear, that's all of you here, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, verse 28. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who spitefully use you. Kind of the same, kind of the same passage there. I want you to hear it, that same verse. Um, uh, put, uh, this is a different translation. Bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. So in, in both of these accounts, uh, the word that they used as spiteful, or one translation says mistreat, it's actually a different word. Uh, some of them speak of those who want to rule. The first account was those who want to stand over you. So it speaks of like strife. So gee, this, it's interesting because these parallel accounts uh, of, of the recounting of uh, teaching of Jesus, they're explaining what Jesus was explaining in quite a few words. One of them used a word that when somebody is trying to one-up you and stand over you, and here, this word is, is the word who mistreats you. And I want to just define this word out of the Greek. It's those who mistreat you. Mistreat, the Greek, the Greek word means this, threaten, abuse. It means to, uh, to intimidate by using threats. Those who create false, tailor-made accusations that fit the situation. You ever had stuff made up about you? I did not, you know, rumors. This happens in high school. This happens not just in high school. Where people talk about you and they tell you, tell everybody what, and so look, keep on listening. It says, uh, it says, un, uh, they, they tailor make uh, false accusations uh, tailor made to the situation. Underhanded tactics customized to smear someone's reputation. And then in parentheses, and then a comma is to make dirty, to mistreat. This word, in, 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 uh, this word says spitefully here, it's just mistreat. To make dirty. You, know, you ever have somebody mistreat your, you, maybe you borrowed somebody a pair of shoes, right? They didn't have shoes, and you borrowed them a pair of shoes, and then they mistreated those shoes. If you have, if you have brothers in the house, I got three boys and they're kind of all entering that same shoe size right and their shoes are important so so if your brother borrows you a pair of their good shoes and you go out and you decide to go tromping through the mud then you mistreated those didn't you you, you showed those with no honor another word of this of mistreat is molest if you've ever been molested I've never been molested, but one of the things that so often goes along with that is shame and dirty, even as a young kid. There's people here tonight that have an enemy and have a root from molestation. And it's it's walked with you. It's haunted you. And you know what's amazing? Prayer removes things it moves mountains you're saying oh pastor nate you don't know about this 
I, I, I know. I know what you're saying. Because the Bible says there's no temptation that's not common to man. So what does that mean? In other words, every person here has, has had a situation with someone where you could say, yeah, but you don't know. But the reality is every one of us have those, those things. So, and if the, the Bible says that Jesus tempted in every way as we were tempted, this is why it says in Hebrews how he's able to, in a sense, uh, uh, you know, c- come on the same page as, as us in our weaknesses because he understands, right? Okay. So we're to love, we're to forgive. It goes on to say in that same passage, uh, we're not going to read the full thing, um, but he talks about how we're to be merciful, uh, just as our Father is merciful. That we're to be kind uh, to the ungrateful and to the wicked. I mean, who wants to do that, really? Nobody. But he says, "Pray." So I wanted to just define "pray," and then we're gonna we're gonna do something tonight. We're gonna read about uh, the blood washing. And, and I believe there's going to be some like eye-opening Holy Ghost work on the heart. Uh, and you're going to see what the blood of Jesus d- does. And how we haven't approached our enemies with the blood. Um, we just wanted their blood. And, and so, but listen to what it means to pray. The word pray. It means towards or in exchange. To wish towards them. Not wish bad. <laughs> but to wish towards them, literally to interact with the Lord by wishing or switching human ideas so he, uh, as he imparts faith or divine persuasion. So this is, again, this is just them trying to take two words that's really related to faith. One of, it's two words, the word faith and another word meaning to wish towards. So you got to have faith to wish towards. So you see them in your heart or in your eyes uh, of your heart and you wish towards them faith, a word that God says. Not a word that you think, but a word that God says. So to pray for somebody, you're not like, Lord, bless them. Well, you are saying, Lord, bless them, but you are wishing towards them, but you're wishing towards them a word that God says. That's what it means to pray. To pray here in this in this situation, to pray for somebody, to pray for your enemies, you're to look towards them and you're to think, John, okay, I don't know, I'm not, I don't know John. It's not, this is hypothetical here. John. And then you're to pray over their family. Because that's what comes to you. Because again, the word of where does faith come? Does it come here? No, it comes to your heart, right? It's not, faith doesn't originate. Faith, the word of God is spirit. His words are spirit and they speak to our spirit, to the inner man, the hidden man of the heart. So from your heart, you pray a God word. Now for some, it might be over their finances. For some, it might be over their family. For some, it might be their health. For some, it might be, I'll just tell you it's this, it's a word from the Lord. Because as you look towards them, the Lord will put something in you for them. This is actually how prophecy works. Prophecy is not for the elite. Prophecy is not for the spiritually elite. It actually says that these are gifts that God has given, spiritual gifts that God has given. And he says that you and I are to desire these spiritual gifts. This is found in Corinthians. And he says, but desire that you would prophesy, that you could look towards somebody that you could see or you sense that the Lord is to say they're hurting and you would look towards them and you would get a word from the Lord and by faith, instead of praying to the Father, you instead you speak that word of faith to them. That's, that's prophecy. Thank you, Lord. So we're going we're gonna to pray for enemies tonight. We're going to pray for those who made us dirty. We're going to pray for those who, uh, despite and in spite of everything, we're going to pray for the, those enemies. But how we're going to do it is I want to go to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. It says, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And though they are like red like crimson, they shall become like wool. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they're going to be like snow. 
What does that mean? A washing, doesn't it? A, st- a, st- a stain free. Though they, though, though, though they were crimson, they're going to be white as snow. The blood washing. So if sin can wash away my sin, it can wash away their sin. I say that again. If sin can wash away my sin, it can wash away their sin. Now let's look at just a few scriptures tonight about the power of the blood of Jesus. And so that when we pray for, we pray for them, we, we plead the blood. That's what we do. This is how you approach these situations. You apply the blood of Jesus over that, over that relationship. I applied the blood of Jesus over that relationship. I put the blood over that. What, what blood? The blood that's redeeming blood. The blood that's a washing blood. The blood that's a cleansing blood. A cleansing conscious blood. Your conscience? Yeah. The, the inner part of you the, that knows between here and here. It's the part that communicates both from the natural man to your heart. There's things that have gotten into your heart and a root of bitterness. And you've tried here. But every time you see them, it just keeps on popping up here. The Bible says it can cleanse your conscience. That which would pull from here and to here. The, the conscience would be cleansed to where it can't reach, in a sense, to that peace anymore. It, 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 there's not the pathway to hurt. You know, you can have the pathway to hurt can be completely erased. The pathway to hurt. How you've been hurt by so-and-so. How, well, yeah, when I was a kid, this is just my identity. It doesn't have to be our identity. The Bible says that Jesus, he is the restorer. He, He restores what the worm has eaten. He takes a, a, a load of, of worm uh, feces and he puts it back to whole. I don't understand how, but I understand who and he's not limited. And how he works is the blood of Christ. Let's look here at some scriptures. Again, let us reason together. The blood of Jesus washes us. Now, Revelation chapter 1, 4 through 6. John writes to the seven churches that are in Asia, Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. From the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, the ruler of the kings of earth. I I just love how it's setting up. Just who's talking here? To him who loves us and released us from our sins by what? To him who loved us, washed us, and from our sins uh, released us. Oh, that doesn't say it here. Released us from our sins. This, it, the washing, the releasing of our sins was from the blood of Christ. It wasn't just the washing, it was the releasing. There no longer is that held against you. This is, this is that, the word watch, to release for us from our sins. This is who's talking. How did he do it? How did the release of sin happen for you and me? How did it happen? The blood. The release of that sin was only possible by the blood. You got some things you've been holding on? The release of that sin, the blood of Christ can, can release the sin that is so attached to somebody's identity. No longer is it your identity. You're released from that. You, not only are you released from that, but they can be released from that from you. From you. you no longer is their identity attached to that sin. This is forgiveness. This is the forgiveness of God. This is agape love. This is the power of the blood. Hebrews 9, 14. How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, I think this was ESV, not not in New King James, but it's okay on all of these. How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, cleanse our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? What can cleanse? How much more shall the 
This is in your Bible. Circle, highlight, underline. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who has through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your what? Your conscience. What does he cleanse it from? From dead works or from sin so that you can serve or you can choose God's way. You can can get the hamburger with no onions and a a tomato and mustard only. That's what it means to serve. You can get things God's way. You can choose, yeah, well, that's not how I like it. That's not the way I do it. I want bacon and I want this. No, no. You can serve when you're, you can do it God's way when your conscience is cleansed. You know why so many times we struggle to do what, because our conscience, that which is between here and here, the relationship, the inner man, the, the voice that speaks from here to here is so connected to all the story. We're so connected to the story that we, ca- we choose not to or we judge in such a way uh, that, that we can't do that. We, 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 we won't do that. You can't. We won't do that. Why? Because we know better. Because we know what somebody did. Well, what does the blood of Jesus do? It cleanses conscience. It cleanses conscience. It also releases us. So I'll say it this way. We're talking, if the blood of Jesus can wash my sin, it can wash their sin. If the blood of Jesus can release me of sin, it can release them of their sin that I'm holding against them, the blood of Jesus. If the blood of Jesus can, uh, can cleanse my conscience to serve the Lord, it can cleanse it, and, and the things that I've done, it can cleanse my conscience concerning the things that they've done to me. Hebrews 9, 22. And almost all things are cleansed. What are they cleansed with? And without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. So without you and I applying the blood, without you and I being aware of the blood, the price that was paid for us, all things are cleansed by the blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. You and I can't forgive. We can't walk in love. We, the Bible says we love because he loved us. The blood. Oh, the blood. Oh, the precious blood of Jesus that was, that paid my price. That wasn't, that was the substitute for me. That was my blood. That was my blood. But instead of it being my blood, he used his blood for me. While I was still a while he, he had no way. I still had the choice. I don't, there's so many people that, that, that just don't ever, that he paid the price for them too. He didn't say, well, I don't know if I'm not going to get everybody. I, I mean, like what, how many percent, what's the percentage here? The blood. Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him. Who? Who did they overcome here? The accuser. This is what this. This is how the enemy works, and this is how. When I talk about the enemy, I'm talking about Satan, the accuser of the brethren. This is how he works. He accuses people. He, the, your enemy, is accused to you by Satan, so that you would hold to them and hold these things against them, but the whole time you don't realize it's not you holding things against them. It's you're locked up. Like, if you got to hold that against them, it's kind of like the guy putting his finger in the dam. Where are you going? Where are you going to go? What, what, you have so much to do in your life, but you're holding your finger in the dam. So you're locked up. The things that God has for you to do, the, the, the joy, the, and if you, put, if, you, if you don't hold it against them, you think... You think that what's going to happen is they're going to get away with it. 
But the reality is, if you'll, walk, if you'll pull your finger out of that hole and, and, and you'll apply the blood of Jesus and thank the Lord for the blood of Jesus, what will happen is, is you'll overcome and, and you'll realize that, that what a liar. What a liar. And they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony. So their testimony changed because of the blood. So your story can change about your history. Do you know that? Your story can change about, about your past. Your story, it's interesting. Uh, what sin, there's a song. What sin, it's as far as the east is from the west. Like you're going to talk about to God about your sin. Anybody, I wonder what that's going to sound like. I wonder what it sounds like when you talk to God about the sin, you know, like from two years ago that you repented for like six times now, or 600 times, and you keep talking to the Lord who has washed you, cleansed you, and has removed the sin as far as the east is from the west, which has no end. He doesn't know what you're talking about. So your history has changed. Your history has changed. I truly am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Your testimony about, uh, about your enemy can change. And you can move from, from hating your enemies to loving your enemies. You can move. Uh, I, I think about my mom sometimes. About her history and her story. And, and my mom taking care of her daddy. On his last days of his life. And, and, and asking uh, my mother-in-law, which is Susan, hey, could you come pray, pray with him? Maybe, maybe he'll receive Jesus. And while he's in the hospital, after all the history, he receives Jesus. And my mom, the whole time, is, is, is just the last, when she received Christ, it's just, it's wild to me. When she received Christ, Papa Jim came back into our life. Papa Jim, the dad, the drunk, the molester, the, all of these things. No, 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 no. To her, the father. The father. The daddy that lost two sons in a short amount of time and didn't know how to handle it and turned to the bottle. What would I have done? I don't know. The love of God came up. And he loved, he, or she loved him. And said, and said, and I'm using my mom and dad's name, said, Mike, let's get him a car. So, I can't tell you how many times my mom and dad bought him a Cadillac and oh, he liked the old Cadillacs. Because of love. I can't tell you how many times I would be over there cleaning up. As a little kid, uh, as a little kid, I didn't understand this love. I, I didn't like the love that she would show and we'd go there and we'd clean up things and messes that I'm like, this is, if he wouldn't drink, or the, and my mom just loved him all the way to Jesus. Wow. You know what that was? The power of the blood. It released her. It released her, and it released him. Your enemy is not your enemy. You have one enemy. one enemy and we're and brothers are turned against brothers and fathers are turned against children and and yet there's one behind all of it I give you no authority I silence the accuser and I overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony and I declare I declare the blood over the situation I declare the blood over this relationship you know what? You ever been on a you ever watch a trial? Maybe you watched Matlock back in the day. Some of you are gonna laugh, Matlock. Columbo. All right. So that's 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 dating a little. When someone would take a stand, they'd have to testify, they'd be cross-examined. And if you'll hold to your testimony, I said if you'll hold to your testimony. The judgment 
can come down and you can be free. If you hold to your testimony, but, but if you want to allow your trial to continue, just talk about a little bit more evidence that you have not yet presented. And you can just stay in that trial and you can stay on that stand and you can stay in the, and you can be robbed of and robbed from when you could have had the gavel drop. You could have walked out free, but instead you're locked up. Hebrews chapter 10, 19. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter uh, the holy place, how do we enter a holy place? We enter the holy place. The holy places. How do we end? What is a holy place? It's a place that's set apart. There's no spot. There's no wrinkle. There's no blemish. You can enter the place where you are without spot, where there is no blemish. By what? By the blood of Jesus. When you and I pray for our enemies, is what we're going to do tonight. We're going to play a song. We're going to worship the Lord. We're going to let the blood of Jesus go to work. And there's some names that are inside of each heart here. When I mentioned enemies, you, there's some of you just, boom, you knew. You got these, this one and this one and this one. And it's just been, every time you and your wife could be a mother-in-law it could be it, that it could be it could be very much family but every time that name's mentioned something on the inside just goes cross it gets hard we say it this way how do you know that somebody's an enemy because you go closed see you're not open with your enemies when the enemies come and you close the gate when the enemies come and you close the door when the enemies come and you harden the heart. And so tonight, we're going to pray. And so prayer is not always, um, you know, just like a list of petition. Sometimes uh, prayer is this, just this conversation with the Lord and the conversation uh, of repentance. And a, a, a conversation of uh, 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 dedication, Right? Uh, the prayer of consecration, where you would come, come, give yourself uh, back to light, back to the Lord, or and dedicate fully to Him. But I think that even tonight, what tonight is, it's a prayer of just release. Tonight's a prayer of release, the same way that Jesus washed our sins and released them as far as the east is from the west, washed them away. Is what we're gonna we're gonna just have that prayer, Father. I release them. I release them of any wrong they did to me. I plead the blood of Jesus over them, and you'll watch your conscience as you yield to and you come into agreement with the Lord. You'll watch your conscience by the blood of Jesus be cleansed. Father, I release John. Father, I release I release my mom. Father, I release my dad. Father, I, re I I'm not again. I'm not speaking from my. I'm just giving the analogies here. A lot of times I'll tell stories about my mom or my dad and things like that. Uh, this is not what I'm explaining there, just so we're clear. But you'll say, Father, I release them. And that's what this prayer is about tonight, releasing your enemies by the blood of Jesus, consciousness being cleansed, past being, and you know, I loved, I wanted to end with this holy one because I really sensed there was a, pa there was a dirtiness that somebody was holding on to as an identity, but you can enter this holy place where you're holy and pure without spot or blemish because of the blood of Christ. And you don't have to walk and see that person and think of the history of the dirty because the history is erased. It's, you, you've been redeemed and restored and you're saying, this sounds like too good to be treated. No, this sounds like the gospel. This sounds like the gospel, the blood of Jesus. Had it not been for the blood, had it not been for the blood, there would be no, there would be no forgiveness, there would be no remission, there would be no release from our sins. So tonight, as we plead the blood, we're gonna just release our enemies from how they dirtied us, from how they 
made rumors about us uh, for all the things they did despite of how what I did for them. We're going to release that. Amen? Let's the stand tonight. Thank you, Lord. So I just want to, uh, we're going to play this, uh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And we're just going to go through it for a little while, right? So this is a prayer. This song is a prayer. And it's so, so cool as you listen to these words. Uh, do we have those words for that song? I don't know if we do. Yeah. What has washed away my sin? Nothing but the blood. So just uh, what, what's going to wash away the sin? Nothing but the blood. Wash it away. Next verse, it says this. What has made me whole again? Wow. Your identity, your reputation. I'll never be the same. I'll never be able to hold my head in a small town like it was because of what they said about me. No, not according to the blood. What has made me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You can walk out of here head high. You can walk into work head high. You can walk in your community head high. You can walk into your family head high. No matter what has happened, no matter what you did, what they did, no matter the story, you can walk head high. You can walk whole. Thank you, Lord. Next one. Oh, precious. Oh, so valuable is this blood that makes me white as snow. There's nothing else that I know that can do this. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. See, the only reason you can have an enemy is because of a mark. They got the mark, you know, they got the check mark. They got the, but the washing, the washing. And you don't have to be held. And you don't have to be bitter. You don't have to, we're going to release them tonight. We're going to release our enemy. We're going to pray for them. And as we pray, we're going to wi- look towards that name as you release them. Then I, then I want you to pray a word from God. That's by faith. A word that he speaks to your heart. There might be some situations that you know, and you know they could use some prayer regarding that. And you're going to say, bless God. Thank you for this, for this. Just watch God work in our midst. Amen. Go ahead and I'm going to come down here and pray with you. Because I got, I got some enemies. See, what, 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 what prompted this today was uh, about 4 o'clock, I was going to go a different direction. And I jumped on Facebook. Uh, I don't even know why. Oh, I have to check a TikTok thing. I'm not a TikTok guy. So I'm trying to figure out these social anyway. I don't, I don't spend time on Facebook other than Marketplace. So if you don't get likes because you had a baby on, or, or something happened, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not Facebook, okay? But the enemy overplayed his hand because a name popped up. And as the name popped up, I told my wife, I said, I got to get my heart right. I gotta get my heart right towards these people. I didn't even know I hadn't I hadn't seen them in three years, but I got something. There's something going on there, and 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 I, I didn't even recognize it until I clicked on their name and there were some comments, you know. And then somebody else that was attached to that name had commented too, and I'm like, I need to get my name, my heart right to those those people right there. I need, I need to get my heart right. And I said, told my wife, I said, and I don't want to. And I don't want to. And that's because it, it, it immediately I was checked in my heart, like something was scratched. And I was like, no, I'm, we're not going there. I, I don't see him. I don't know. I, I, it's, I don't, it, I'm good. No, nope. no, nope. you're locked up. And so tonight this is what we're doing is for me I'm getting free I'm going to make an exercise of my faith I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus you know and I think there's there's that's going to happen with a lot of people tonight Uh, you know I want so much I want so much for things to be right more than I want to be right I want so much for things to be right more than I want to be right 
May that be what's said about the people of God. That we just want things right. Amen? The blood of Jesus making it right. Thank you, Lord.
nothing but the blight It's nothing but the blight Of Jesus It's nothing but the blight It's nothing but the blight It's nothing but the blight Of Jesus And oh everything the Lord has spoken but he'll bring things back to us but in Matthew 5 23 it says therefore if you're offering a gift at the altar and there that you remember that your brother or sister has something against you sometimes what we're talking about we have enemies not because we hold something against them but because they're holding something against us did you know those situations and those names that pop up and you know that something's wrong? This is what I'm talking about. You might not, in a sense, be angry with them, but you recognize here, as it says in Matthew 5, 23, you recognize and you remember and you are re reminded of when you hear their name. You're reminded of that they're not happy with you. This is a plead the blood over that situation. This is to plead the blood over that relationship. This is to plead the blood. This is a, what does it mean to plead the blood? It means when I stand on trial, I plead like you could plead the fifth. You could plead your innocence. You could plead guilty. What we're going to plead, what we're going to declare is the blood. We declare the blood of Jesus over, over those words that were spoken uh, in, in that heat of the moment that were misunderstood and the story was written. We plead the blood of Jesus there. We plead the blood of Jesus over, over family relationships with our kids. In that conversation where you wanted things right and you said something wrong, we plead the blood of Jesus over that relationship and over those words. We plead the blood. Lord, if there's a place that we spoke out of line. We repent for what we did. What we did knowing or unknowingly, Lord, we repent. We plead the blood of Jesus over that. Over words spoken, over stories created. Father, thank you for a washing away of that story. Oh, thank you, Lord. Waves, just waves, written in the sand. Waves, just the waves of your love. Waves of your love. Every story that was written in the history, just the waves of your love. The waves of your love that was proved in your son Jesus would wash over that situation in the name of Jesus. Washing over history with moms and dads. Washing over history with brothers and sisters, with brothers, washing over history, with husbands, washing over history, with your wife. 
Father, thank you for a washing tonight. Thank you for a releasing tonight. Thank you for a freeing tonight. Thank you for, if there's any name that pops up that we, uh, uh, just uh, uh, out of the, the blue that, that would be the enemy trying to get us to stumble, we, we say we'll plead the blood. We plead the blood. We choose the blood of Jesus. We choose the blood of Jesus that washes our, our, and cleanses our conscience, that brings us into a holy, righteous, wonderful place that released us and has the power to release them. We choose the blood tonight. Thank you for your blood. 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 Thank you that you're working and causing all things even now to work together for our good. That's what you said. And God causes all things to work together Thank you, Father, for working together for good right now and perfecting the things that concern us. Thank you, Lord. The heaviness we release, we release it to you. We release it to you. We release it to you. And we will testify. And we will say, and we will recount only what you say. I refuse to stay on trial. Nope, I plead the blood. I declare the blood and the blood declares my innocence. The blood declares freedom. The blood declares story. Father, thank you for that tonight in so many relationships. The power of your blood. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Lord. Um, I just heard that right before we went in, into worship, but um, really felt like I heard some of you may be battling even physical symptoms in your body, and it may have shown up recently. Um, it may have been something that's plaguing you for years, but, you know, the Bible tells us that a merry heart does good like a medicine. And, you know, you can have, there's joy in your heart when you are walking in love. And there's joy in your heart when you can look at people through God's way of looking at people. And when you look at them with his love and his heart and what we did tonight, you release them. And you know, it's so important. We talk about this a lot. The Bible tells us so often to guard your heart. And you know, he shared that um, today. And you know, our flesh wants to hold on to stuff. But you know, any time that um, there's something going on in your heart, it's important to target that and then ask the Lord to help you what's the root of that so that you don't just tend to the outside stuff, but you get to the root of it. And so that's what I just heard tonight, that you getting to the root of that, your physical symptoms will go away that you've been dealing with. And you know, there is scientific proof that that tells us bitterness, unforgiveness, holding on to stuff, always being in strife affects you. Yeah. And you know, it doesn't just affect your body health, it affects your soul health. And you know, God is a God that doesn't just desire you to be healthy in your body and not just healthy in your spirit, but also healthy in your soul. And so I just heard that tonight, that some of you are just going to see a drastic change in your soul health and in your body health, just simply by forgiving and releasing. And then lastly, this scripture that he was talking about in Luke 6, um, you know, by the blood of Jesus, we can love the way he loves. And I just love that. And applying the blood of Jesus, I remember 
Mona saying that over relationships and stuff. She would talk so often about just applying the blood of Jesus there. And I do that now. Um, and it, it's so, so important. But you know, there's a remedy here in Luke 6, 27. If you read 27 through 36, there are things that the Lord talks about to love your enemies. And you know, in God's kingdom, it's always opposite of what the world says to do, which is why it's so important to be in the word to see how God thinks and to see the way we're supposed to do stuff. So there's an action to it, applying the blood of Jesus like we did tonight. But you know, it tells us at, at the very beginning, I think it's so interesting that he says, but those of you who will listen, you know why? Because what he's about to say is something that a lot of us could turn away from and say, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to forgive. I'm fine. You know, like even you said, I don't see him very often. I'm just going to shove that to the side. So I find it interesting before he talks about this whole passage, passage that he says, those who will listen. Sometimes you don't even recognize mm -hmm. that you had something until you hear their name again. You thought everything was cool, but inside something got in there, you know? Yep. Something got in there, you know? And a lot of times it's because you were expecting something in return. Because of what you did, you were expecting reciprocation. You were expecting something in return and the results, bitterness. Yeah. yeah. So it tells us here, those who will listen, and he tells us this, love your enemies. So that's a, that's a step, love, love them. And then you know what it says, do good. To, so this is stuff we can put into practice starting now. Applying the blood of Jesus, loving my enemies, but he lays it out here. This is like laying out how to resolve this. Do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. And then down in verse 30, it says give. So we're to love, we're to do good, we're to bless, we're to pray, we're to give. Down in verse 35, it says to lend, and then it ends with being merciful. So these are all ways that he tells us. And you know what? God so loved the world that he did what he gave. There is something about applying the blood of Jesus. There's something about praying for them, but there is something about doing good to someone that you know there's stuff going on, but you are just there to love. And it tells us there, not expecting anything in return. Yeah. Because my love is the God kind of love just, it stops at, I just love, period. Whether they say thank you, whether they say, oh, you know what, I was so wrong, please forgive me. Doesn't matter. I keep loving, I keep doing good, I keep blessing, I keep sowing, I keep giving, I keep doing what the Holy Spirit tells me to do. Whether or not they show that back. And so this is all just action steps that you can do for people who have mistreated you or, and you know the awesome thing is your heart changes for that person when you do this. For your enemies. And uh, sometimes you're your own worst enemy. And what we're talking about is being good, doing good. There's, you maybe don't see this so much anymore. You know, as you get older, you don't see people cutting themselves, but they're cutting themselves. They're holding things against themselves about, ah, oh, I should have never said that. I don't know if you're like me, but sometimes when you mess up, you, you're mad at yourself that you messed up that way. And then you get mad that you're mad that you messed up and you just, you get into this whirlwind of just unforgiveness and counting against yourself. And you don't let yourself out of a pit. That'll lead you to a place of despair It'll lead you to a place of being divided to where uh, even uh, when you're not whole, you'll struggle to hear from the Lord because you're not whole, because you're holding things against yourself. And you've heard it said, you are your own worst enemy. Sometimes you are your own worst enemy. What we're talking about tonight, you need to plead the blood of Jesus over yourself, over that conversation, over what you, how you messed up, uh, over what you did that night when you shouldn't have done that that night and you caused all of this 
You need to plead the blood. And you can have a washed away. And you can have a, a rest- restoration the blood of Jesus. This is the gospel. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so we're going to close tonight, you know, that Ma- Matthew 5, 23 and 24 says, if you, had, if you knew that there was ought in your heart uh, or if somebody had something against you, uh, he said, before you give, uh, leave that gift at the altar and then go and make it right. So we're going we're gonna to do it kind of a, a different, rather than passing buckets, we got, uh, we're going to leave the gift, uh, just some buckets up here at the altar because of that. And then also, um, we are going to flip the sanctuary tonight for team night. Um, and so if you, if you are available, we'd love to have you help us sec or move a few chairs out, help us get a few tables in. We have team night, uh, it, which is anyone who serves, uh, at beyond church. Um, we have, I'm excited about this team night. It's going to be a really special. And, uh, so anyway, so if you're available to help us flip the sanctuary, we'd love that. Uh, but before we do, you'll bring those buckets forward. That'd be awesome. And we're going to pray. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the work, uh, the work. You do work. You're working now. Your work is a complete work. And we just say thank you that you're able to do what we can't. You're able to speak. You're able to mend and repair. You're able to touch the heart like we can't. Where would we be without you? As a help, as a counselor, as a guide, as a provider. Where would we be? And tonight, as we as we close in worship and as we give, we just say thank you. Thank you for your generosity towards us. It's extravagant. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for meeting all of the needs that you're taking care of your people better than the birds, better than any flower. You care for what we care for. And we just say thank you tonight. Thank you that where there's need, you're the supply. And you supply more than enough so that we're not limited in any way in our generation. We say thank you tonight. We commit these ties, these offerings to you, Lord, to your work, to your service everything you want done here on this earth in this church in this community Father thank you for the vision for it thank you for the application in the name of Jesus Amen 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 you can go ahead and give we'll just take just a moment and do that before we just jump to the next I don't know if anybody's you know Wednesday night online I know we don't really do buckets so much anymore but there it is um All right, Landon, where's Landon? Thank you, Lord. All right. You all awake? You alive? What a good service. It's powerful. This is life-changing stuff right here. It's life-changing. It's changed my life. And it'll change your life. You know, one of the most important things about when we get the word is applying it. It's applying it. And so we had an opportunity to act on, our, on the word tonight. You know what that's called? That's called living by faith. This is why we've been going to faith school and it's been a good thing. Amen? All right. Thank you for joining us. We hope you were strengthened and encouraged by the word of God. If you need prayer, feel free to text us at the number on the screen below. You can also send us an email to info at beyondchurch.org or submit a prayer request form on our website at beyondchurch.org. 
If you'd like to partner with us in preaching Jesus, you can give securely online through our app or website, or if you prefer to mail your gift, send it to the address shown below. Stay connected with us throughout the week. You can download the app for all of our latest messages and announcements, and be sure and follow us on our socials at Beyond Church. If you've never attended in person, we highly encourage you to plan a visit. You'll never regret prioritizing godly community. We love you and hope to see you soon.